If men really, really, really want freedom, you should listen to feminists because we actually believe that you're um, less awful than you believe you are. Even though in this really weird way, men are in complete denial of how awful they are as a collective towards themselves, towards women, towards planet Earth. And it's all tied in with white supremacy culture capitalism and all of the things, right? I want to show you an example that went uh, viral of just how, how low they think of themselves. How they use this excuse to, for their bad behavior because they would rather be terrible people than do mm, some work on themselves and deconstruct a little and let go of some power and actually be proud of who they are and like themselves. Ah, they don't want to do that. So they would let, they would rather settle for being just trash than um, self-respecting humans. And so let's, let's dig in. It all started with this man, Lloyd, Lloyd Evans, who decided to put his thoughts on paper, rather on a screen, and then print it. We got to see just how much this man hates himself by seeing how he thinks about women. It all started with this tweet, because this woman, a highly respected historian, like winner of many prizes, speaker at large events, like highly respected academic, gave um, a lecture. Lloyd here could not help but schmegulize her in the worst way. So I, let's just get in. Now, something good that came out of this story is that I know now, I now know of this woman. Never heard of this dude before today, but I never heard of her. I'm more interested in what she has to say now because it sounds like she was giving a pretty cool lecture. I don't know, maybe she has some stuff I really don't agree with, but I like to always see some sort of like silver lining. If it means that this uh, people know her work more and if she does really great work, well, good for her. If this man loses his career and is outed as a little pervert that he is, good for him too. He wrote this for this terrible publication that I had actually never heard of until today, thank God, called The Spectator. A surprisingly decent proposal. Like, and that's, I don't even think that's a joke. This man is now going viral because everyone knows that he is lonely sad, pathetic, apparently no one else wants to sleep with him. Anyway, look, everyone is talking about this guy in the worst possible way. I don't know if anyone will take this man seriously after this. I mean, maybe, maybe the people on the right, but whatever. Right out of the gate, you actually understand what this man's problem is. Sentence. Like being chained to a lunatic, that's how a man feels in relation to his libido. Comes out of the gate swinging. Men are animals, not rational human beings who are capable of emotional intelligence, leadership, healthy communication, being in charge of anyone, not even themselves. No, men are dogs. Don't ever leave them alone with children, women. They have no self-control whatsoever. Now, these same men will then also think that they should be in charge of everything, which is why it's like, bro, your argument is so empty. Like it makes no sense. But before I just get into this insanity, I believe that this is BS. I know men don't need schmegs. I know that for a fact. And you know how I know? Because I have, I, I've only met a few men in my life who wanted it as much as I did. I have always had more of and a lot of women I know are like this. So I really enjoy my Schmeg's life, but I also am okay if I don't get laid. I don't know if it's because I have more testosterone. I don't know why it is. All I'm saying is that I am almost always more Schmegsual than any of the man, men I have ever been with, with the exception of a few. Yet I could cut that thing off and go celibate for a long time too, because it's not a need. It's a want. It is a vice for a lot of men. They don't need it. They are just dead inside, have no other healthy outlet for dealing with their emotions. So they use schmegs the same way they use their gaming and their cigarettes and their drinking and everything else. It's a vice and used poorly. Way to feel alive the same way 
this is, right? They don't need it. Any man who says this, which is a lot of men, boys will be boys. Men are dogs, but also let us lead the world. It's like, uh, you don't even think you're human. <laughs> At least I think you're human. You're just selling yourself really short because I hold you to a high standard. I don't think men are trash right out of the fucking womb. I actually believe they're humans and have been socialized for the most part to be like this. And because I believe that, I also know they can change if they want to. They just don't want to. They just don't want to. So Lloyd here thinks that men are, uh, he's chained to a lunatic. That lunatic being himself. And he's saying men want us to respect them and let them be leaders? Are you kidding me? Anyway, let's get into it. You know, he, he, in relation to the and the lunatic latches on to anything irrationally and without warning. So don't trust men around any women. Okay, Lloyd, let's just lock all y'all up. Lock you all up so that we're safe. Is that what you're arguing for? Because that's not what I'm arguing for, although sometimes I think maybe we should. But you seem to think that you should be locked up because you're a lunatic. <laughs> he can't help himself. Instead of me understanding that this is your patriarchal conditioning that dehumanizes women because you don't even think you're human because you're cut off from your own humanity. And can, so basically he's talking about how he went to this lecture by this brilliant woman, Leia, oh my God, looked up how to say her name and now I'm blanking. He, so sorry if I said that wrong. I'm so, so sorry. And she was talking about, uh, it sounds like a really interesting lecture about revolutionaries and all kinds of stuff, right? We don't even hear about it. I really don't know what the lecture is about because this right here is how men write movies and write books, which is why part of decentering men is not reading their stuff anymore. Unless you're reading it to understand how we've been brainwashed. Unless you're reading it to understand how they see the world in such a twisted way, which is the only reason why I read this. Because read, I'm telling you, I have, you know, I have like a screenwriter too. I've written several and placed, uh, in, one of them placed in several awards. And whenever I read the way men write characters when they introduce them, Google it. Like her wispy blonde hair and her cleavage and the way they talk about it is just like this. Nothing about their humanity, all about her, how, how they were seducing or something about their looks, always centered on their looks. Blonde hair spilling over her shoulders absorbed, absorbed far more of my attention than her political reflections and I was desperate to speak to her afterwards, but I had no way to orchestrate a meeting. That is all we find out about her. That's it. That's it. Honestly, he should have left her name out. People would not be as mad if he hadn't literally said who it was. Because everyone who knows her work, people like me who've never heard of her work, I'm like, go look her up and we're like, how dare you? I'm gonna actually show you some other stuff I found about Lloyd after we get through this mess. It's just too crazy to not go over. Instead, I headed for the rougher end of Cambridge, near the railway terminus where the misfits and outcasts gather. What do those people look like, I wonder? This man is, you're gonna see, this man is also very racist, but that is not a shocker because purity culture and uh, hierarchy and white supremacy culture are like this, right? Already arranged a social rendezvous at a private business location. So this was premeditated. <laughs> Here's how it works. You hand over a roll of banknotes to concierge at a desk who ushers you into a softly lit room where your companion awaits you. Mine was petite, black haired and buxom. Shea, Shea, not sure, uh, she called herself. She looked Chinese rather than Irish, but you never know these days. Okay, uh, so I asked her what, which part of Ireland. God, I hate, I hate this man so much that she came from. Shanghai, she told me. I lay naked on the couch and she rubbed hot wax onto my shoulders, a ritual that gives these uh, as, assigni, as, oh my God, assigni, ag, assignations. Oh my God, I don't know that word. See, the writer fancy pants man. It just makes, I feel stupid now. I promise you I'm smarter than this man. Ah, an air of medical respectability. Oh. A moment later, she ordered me to flip onto my back as she dimmed the lights and raised one eyebrow at me suggestively. This was a cue for negotiations. Mm, I'm not sure if negotiating is what she wants. Probably like, are you gonna pay me? 
The money at the desk stays at the desk. And Shay, oh, I don't know if it's Shay or Shaya, makes a separate deal with the client. Her opening bid was the same as the cost of my overnight hotel. So I made a lower offer. Oh, fuck you. Imagine, imagine thinking that a woman's body is not worth the cost of a hotel room. Not just her body, but her emotional labor and all the things that come with that. By the way, I know some people find it problematic that I support Schmeg's workers. I don't like Schmeg's work, but I also don't judge women who do it. And I highly value the insight that I have gotten from friends of mine who've done it, from people I've um, interviewed when I was reporting stories. The Schmeg's workers that I have talked to understand men on a level that I have never met any other women that understand men on that level. They see a side of men that very few women do. And a big part of their job is emotional labor. So I can make a whole nother video. I am not like, yay, Schmeg's work. What I am is someone who understands that that is for many women, one of their only options for work and to get out of poverty, especially ones that I've met in other countries who are literally going to dental school and that's how they are paying for it. And I hate capitalism and patriarchy and systems that make it so that that is the only option for a lot of women. But I will never hate Schmeg's workers, ever. I want them safe and protected. That's what I want. Anyway, I just want to say that because I get this like a lot. Oh, I'm so disappointed in you, Melanie. I'm not defending system. <laughs> anyway, whatever. I, I should make a whole video on it. Please don't put any anti um, swarf comments in. I'm going to delete any swarf comments. I don't want those and they're not helpful. But you don't have to agree with me. You don't, obviously. Let me know if you want a video on it so I can explain it more. I, it's, it's, a, it's, a long, it's a nuanced conversation. Anyway, okay, but imagine this guy is like, no, nah, it's too expensive. He, 20 pounds less, he offered, and she accepted. Then a crisis emerged. I mean, we're really getting, we're really seeing how awful this man is. I'd surrendered most of my cash, and I was down to a, me a measly fiver. Yeah, five bucks is not going to get you what you want, bro. Not enough. And I just forfeited my ATM card to a greedy machine. He thinks he's being like a cute funny writer here a greedy machine <laughs> okay that gobbled it up gobble 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 <sighs> i hate his writing too as for my uncooperative iphone god this man is so mm, i've never convinced it to pay for anything oh my god he is humanizing his stupid phone more than this woman he's humanizing an atm he, he's the ATM is a sentient being, but she's not like, do you see the way he's talking already? I can't, he is talking about these things more better than he ever talked about this woman or the professor woman. I think she's a professor uh, who did the lecture. I offered to fetch my laptop from my hotel and to transfer the money when I got back. But, but Shay didn't like that idea. She refused to let me leave fearing that my lucrative custom might slip through her fingers. <sighs> this struck me as bizarre. Where else would I go? I couldn't imagine a better pastime than a brisk workout ugh, with the lovely Shay, who was about 48 years old. <sighs> I would guess. And, ah! Uh, and had a crooked smile, which I found far, far more attractive then those ultra white Hollywood teeth that look like pieces of leg. Oh God. Does anybody else feel like barfing? Yeah, what he's doing here is like, ugh. Like I, this woman, you know, she's 48, has a crooked old smile. She's a smudge worker. Do you know what? I prefer that. These silly women who have their perfect little Hollywood Lego teeth for that. Smarty pants on stage I saw that I never had a chance with, so I'm coming here instead. So this is literally like, if you want to understand what the Madonna horn complex is, this is it right here. This is Ginger and Marianne. <laughs> this is wifey material and like hookup. Never the two shall cross, right? This is binary thinking, which is absolutely a part of purity culture, patriarchy, white supremacy culture, all that stuff. Is this, you're good or you're bad. Good or bad? No nuance. I'm good. Oh, everything I do that may be kind of bad, like it's because I'm a good man. <laughs> At her suggestion, 
We went ahead anyway, and the issue of payment was left unresolved. I appreciated that. She trusted me. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Probably like crap. <laughs> About five bucks. I either take a chance and hope that this man is not going to steal my body and my time by just never coming back and paying me. I don't know. To me, it sounds like she really wasn't in a position to say no and was hoping that you would pay her. But it's not because she trusts. You! God! So thank God, for all our sakes, we did not have to read about his thing, whatever he would call it. I don't even know what you call it. I mean, I, don't, I was about to say hookup, but that's not what this is. Uh, anyway, as we got dressed afterward, she complimented me on my old walking shoes. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, I love it. She's like, wow, you got lovely walking shoes, old man. <laughs> Good for her! I love Shay! Thank you, I said, feeling baffled that she'd choose to praise my sorry-looking boots rather than my lean tone physique. <laughs> You're baffled? He's making fun of you, idiot. <laughs> I'm surprised she wasn't like, I really like your gray hair. <laughs> it's like a backhanded compliment. Team shape. <laughs> then she turned shyly towards me with her pale tummy her pale tummy. No, he didn't say. He chose the word tummy for a reason. Maybe this is some sort of like uh, U.S. American English is very different than English spoken in other parts of the world. Like, for example, you know, a cigarette uh, is called a fag. In Spain, when they, they call racers rubbers. So when I was teaching English for like seven-year-olds and they're like, have you got a rubber? I'm like, what? You know, there's a lot of confusion. So I don't know, maybe tummy could just be, you know, stomach in general, but tummy, when I think of tummy, it's usually like a soft kind of belly that's not super toned. I don't know, is it just me? Tell me if I'm if the, I'm reading into this too much. This man keeps taking backhanded compliments, insulting her. That's why I think she's like, I love your old man walking shoes. <laughs> she's like, I can do this too, bruh. But men like this don't think that, that women like this are smart because they can't. Smart woman is the woman on stage, and since he can't have her, he's gonna go to this woman. He thinks that uh, she can't be smart and do what she's doing. And boy, is he wrong. That she has read him like a book. Oh, okay, here we go. Sorry, I'm fat. So she probably caught him looking at her tummy and was like, oh, I'm fat. I'm fat, she said mournfully. I sprang instantly to reassure her. Oh, that's like, that's such a man move. Looking at you like he's judging you, and then you're like, uh, I'm fat. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Even though I literally put that thought in your head. Oh my god, look how crazy he looks right now. Oh! oh. Okay, so what he reassures her, not fat, beautiful. As if you can't be both. <gasps> As if those aren't one in the same. Mm. I said, smoothing my palm tenderly across her stomach. Ew! <laughs> Lovely, pretty. Gorgeous. Oh God, I mm. She's probably like, can you just go? <laughs> uh, I added, spraying out synonyms in hope of finding a word that lay within the compass of her understanding. Oh, this, this man is so pretentious. <laughs> and he's a terrible writer. The compass of her understanding. He's like trying to be a good writer and he's trying so hard he's a bad writer. She seemed Satisfied. <laughs> Definitely not because of your little pay pay. Uh, and not even with it. She's not by anyway, God. As we padded about tugging our clothes back on, I realized we were like a long married couple observing the conventions of mutual respect and cooperation. Uh, really, buddy? You know what? That doesn't surprise me. You probably actually if you were ever married, I don't know, I didn't look into you enough. That's probably exactly how you thought of your wife, right? Because a lot of these men, as soon as they get married, they're like, okay, uh, conjugal duties. You know, what? basically, uh, also grape, like, come on. Come on, come on, are we gonna have? I don't do anything for you. I don't care about your pleasure. Don't actually uh, parent or support you in any way whatsoever because we're married, I'm entitled to brown chicken, brown pie. I swear, a lot of husbands literally look at their wives as if they're schmegs workers. They just don't pay them. That's why I think the women who hate schmegs workers, uh, it, there's a lot behind that. I mean, to talk about that. Like, as if uh, men would stay faithful if uh, schmegs workers didn't exist. Same way women will hate 
the 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 woman who her husband cheated on with more than their husband who betrayed them like this is why seriously once we start to realize we're all getting screwed we should stop hating all these other women for what how men are triangulating us uh we're gonna get a lot farther but the audacity of this man to be like yeah we're like a married couple <laughs> that says a lot about his view on even a woman he would be married to he sees women as a means to an end period we know each other we we've known each other for 17 bro but okay you're telling on you if this man is telling on himself he is humiliating 17 minutes? This included a massage and everything? Like, okay. Anyway, okay. God, I'm getting so tired. And yet, the grooves of domestic harmony so etched into the human character brought our disunited interests together and gave our small talk an air of ease and familiar... <clears throat> Every time I think it can't get worse, it gets worse. He's literally be saying like... Yeah. I feel as close to this woman as I ever did my wife. Or, his, or if he was never married, I hope to God, for her sake, he was never married. I hope there's not an ex-wife out there who had to endure this man. Let's say there is. He's like, wow, yeah, they're the same. Someone I knew for 17 minutes in which she was literally just servicing me, schmegerly, and a woman that I share a whole life with who put almost died giving birth to children if he has them who literally just like seriously they hate both Ginger and Marianne the Madonna and the horns nah they hate both all of it all of us equally so maybe we should stop hating each other because they've distracted us with that I promise you more men think like this than most of us realize back in 10 minutes I told her she looked at me uncertainly without smiling as I left yeah she didn't do this because it was fun he's like please god let him come back with money and not make me have gone through all that with this exhausting old man for nothing I gotta pay rent when I got back <laughs> She was at the front desk about to depart for the evening. Yeah, she was like, oh, he's not coming back. <laughs> I'm sure that has happened before. She might have been any suburban house, here we go, any suburban housewife on en, en route to play bridge or to hear a performance by an amateur handle. So, so I don't know that reference because I'm dumb. Maybe I'm not. Anyway, and she was someone, someone from the UK or something or Ireland or wherever the hell this man's from. Please fill me in. What does that mean? And she was surprised to see me. Yeah, because she didn't trust you, you idiot. Which I found disheartening. <laughs> I can't believe she didn't trust me. A racist, misogynistic, old white man who literally like gave her back handed compliments the whole time it was like uh oh uh oh my phone or the atm gobbled up my mind my car and my phone is not being nice and I'm talking to you like a child i can't believe she thought that i may not be trustworthy <laughs> she thought i was a swindler i mean yeah never trust a man until um he proves otherwise i opened my laptop he literally went back and got his laptop and asked her to put her bank details into my Santander. Why did you use this detail? Ugh, you didn't need to do that. Account on the new payer page. Okay, let me just give you a writer's note right now. Details are what make stories interesting. But these details do not do that. These are stupid details that are unnecessary and don't actually draw me in to the emotional friction of the story. Nor do they make me laugh. I'm like, okay, Santander, why do we need to know that? Don't mention stupid extraneous details that don't add something. New payer, pay Ugh. she spelled her name X-E as it turns out. Oh my God. Not S-H-E-A. Lloyd. Why do you have two L's, Lloyd? Because if it were up to me, it would be L-O-Y-D. L-O-I-D. Like, ugh. I'm sorry, I'm getting really worked up, y'all. But I think y'all like it when I do anyway, so I'm not too worried. And her second name had just three letters. 
Her sort code and her reference details indicate that she held an, ac an account with HSP. Again, terrible storytelling. We still don't know what this woman looks like. We don't know anything about her, but we know that she <laughs> banks with HSBC and he's with Santander. This is an example of terrible writing. God, I miss, I miss coaching writing because this, this, mm, I should give this man lessons, but I never would because I could never tolerate someone like this in a class. Anyway, her local bank. I invited her to type in the fee that I owed and she entered the lower amount with the 20 uh, pound discount. Sorry, is that euros? It's too small. Is that pounds or euros? I think it's pounds. Pounds. No, Shay, I'm disappointed in you. You should have charged this man your full rate, especially after him literally making you wait and go to his hotel and get his stupid laptop. I gallantly deleted this and offered the larger sum she had initially quoted. What a good man. What a good man. Everybody, stand up, applaud this nice guy. Ugh, she giggled and stroked my elbow affectionately. Okay, see, you know what? Actually, I'm not disappointed in you, Shay. You understand men. And she probably knew, let me tell you something, the emotional labor that Meg's workers do is unmatched. That is one of the many things I learned from interviewing them and talking with them. Some of my friends, like I said, who've done it, they have to read the room so well. She's probably like, God, this ego maniacal freak old man with low hanging balls. He's a very fragile ego. And if I actually charge him what I deserve, he'll probably be a jerk and fight me on it. But if I act humble, I act like I'm doing him a favor and I put in the lower amount, he can feel like a big boy. The same way Gary from The Bachelor would slide money under the table so that the woman he was dating could, you know, sorry, that she would slide money to him so that he could pay. Women know that we have to like stroke the fragile ego of men when we need something from them. This is brilliant. I'm sorry, Shay, I owe you an apology. You were so far ahead of me. Mm, you knew exactly what you're doing and it worked. She pretended, oh no. And he was like, no. No, I'm gonna give you that. They need to feel like they've won all the time. That if they only knew that we were literally manipulating them all the time to get our needs met, they would they would just be like, that's just why they don't understand how smart women are. Not a clue. This was all her design. And she fooled him. He stepped right into the insecure, fragile man baby trap. And while he's entering it, she's caressing his elbow. You know, look at this. This casual caress made me feel heroic and magnificent for some reason. Oh, Lloyd, Lloyd, you still don't get it. God, you're dumb. One last detail was needed, payment reference. Why do we need it? I suggested fun. Uh -huh, yeah, fun for you, for her, I promise you. She was probably like, please just give me a man who just shut the fuck up. Any day over this nonsense, I'm telling you, one of the Schmegs workers that I interviewed was like, oh yeah, they come to me and they want to talk about being diagnosed with brain cancer or they want to talk about how, how much they hate their wives and that is so much worse than a man who's just like, I want to be Jay. It's so much easier to just get it done, don't have to talk to you, don't have to listen to all this crap, don't have to like stroke your ego because this man, she's doing so much labor right now. Get what she needs and make him feel good like a big boy. Yay, Kenny! I suggested fun, but Shay, or X-E, God, he's so, mm, had other ideas. Wedding gift, she said, laughing and rubbing my shoulder again. Was this a marriage proposal? <laughs> no, you dummy. She's playing the, I'm, I, I would marry you if I could card. Don't you know? Ugh. This man is like, as dumb as rocks. Sort of yes, but I pretended she just made a throwaway joke. See, he, like she wants him to think he has the upper hand and he, he just falls into each little trap. I love, Shay, you are my hero. You need to teach classes on how to manipulate men to give the, make you give, give them more money. I mean, not really, but like still, this level, this level, what most of us can do this. She's mastered it. And so uh, my bank approved it as I headed for the door. See you next time, she said. <laughs>
Okay, this is another backhanded compliment. He's like, I know you'll be back probably because you're a loser. <laughs> I'd like that, I said. He's sitting here thinking that he's compliment. Oh my God. No doubt she spoke insincerely. Oh, you saw through that? Mm. But I didn't. I meant it privately, secretly, because I have no friends and no women will date me and I'm desperate. <laughs> so uh, the only women who will tolerate me are women I literally have to pay. And even they are like, ugh. The lunatic I'm chained to isn't, bro, it's T-O. Oh! oh, I love it, your last sentence. Anyway, the lunatic I'm chained to <laughs> is invisible, thank God, by Lloyd Evans. See, the other thing about this is because he gets to blame it on the lunatic he's chained to, uh, he has no accountability. This is nothing about him having no dignity, no respect for women, no, uh, I don't know, self-restraint. He was like, ooh, hot woman on stage, she's really smart, mm, I couldn't get her. ATM, cash, money, gotta, gotta have swags. Like, bro, uh, okay, let's blame it on your little lunatic, okay. And again, I wanna remind you that everything that men accuse us of is projection. Why do you think they have been calling women crazy and literally creating mental illnesses out of thin air to justify oppressing us being like, she's crazy, lock her up. She's a bad driver, although the insurance company says otherwise. Women are gold diggers, but all of us are hobos on, are on the hobo spectrum. Women baby trap us, although we literally trap them and, and then abandon them. Like everything, everything, everything is projection. Once I started to see that, I see it all the time. So uh, every once in a while, they'll say the quiet part out loud is like, they refuse to discipline themselves and are very unreliable because they choose not to actually work hard at anything. And then so they're like, it's a little lunatic, but you're the crazy, you're crazy. <laughs> okay, let's just learn a little bit more about Lloyd before we wrap up. Like I said, he got eviscerated on Twitter and I love it. Just exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> He also doubled down when people were like, what is this? He claimed the inspiration for this peak stemmed, oh, y'all look at this, from a travel book titled Tarts and Vic Vickers. I don't know that word, sorry. Where he would visit a cathedral and then a French worker and write about the contrasting experiences. Oh wow, you know, I have never thought that maybe men see women as them in kind of uh -huh. Ginger or Mary Ann. Wow, wow, this is such a new concept. Any woman who has dated men, especially men who are really, really indoctrinated into purity culture, like, dude, every story is this. You're just literally like going in and being like, I only see women as this and this. Asked why he decided to include uh, his professor in the piece at all, he replied, I just find clever and articulate women very attractive and she was physically attractive. And that made me feel a bit lonely. Ah! He said it out loud, y'all. A smart woman who was also attractive, he was like, I can't, uh, 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 I'm attracted to her, but she's smart. Mm. I don't understand how these can go together. I feel lonely. And I ended up in a sauna bath. This guy doesn't even question himself. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> he added, I was trying to encompass both poles of life. This is not poles of life, bro. This is poles of purity culture. This is literally what is wrong with how you think. And it's a you problem. You've all been indoctrinated in it, but you literally have never questioned it. This is a you problem. Poles of life between the intellectual high, high flying political philosophy and a smart one counter. Because those two can never be. What? In other words, uh, bro, you're gonna get a, like a little sex doll soon. And soon, like, even sex workers won't put up with your crap. No amount of money is gonna, you are so insufferable. But do you see, do you see this? This man does not see women as humans at all. He sees an ATM that goes gobble, gobble, gobble as a more sentient being than women. But like women, it serves a purpose to give him things. But in addition to dehumanizing women, he is dehumanizing himself because he is he is not a human being with a soul and all those things he's a, a lunatic he's a, a body you know trying to a lunatic when really he's not that he's just a sick old man who won't question himself 
or let go of power. Of the two I found, the shrimp roll counter much more satisfying and enjoyable. No, you didn't. I mean, yeah, you did because like you use it as a vice. But you're only saying that because you could never get that woman on stage. That's why you literally were like, I, he even said I could never hang out with her. So I went straight to the strip club to pay women to hang out with me. Which in the end, as we saw, Shay is, Shay is brilliant, right? It's just men don't understand. Or they refuse to see emotional intelligence and emotional labor as a form of labor. If women got paid for the emotional labor that we do, the way uh, Shay was paid for her emotional and physical labor, uh, women would, we would be so rich, <laughs> right? We do so much emotional labor for free, but it's just so that like men won't like us and will like, you know, maybe raise the kids too. He added that Professor Yip, Yippee, I'm sorry. Oh, she's really funny and sharp and witty. And that was partly what inspired my feelings of longing towards her because she was obviously a really good laugh apart from everything else. Oh my God, just shut up. Asked if he regrets, had any regrets over the article. He replied, it's a bit unfortunate. I mean, I have had people calling me a sex pervert on Twitter. I think that is strange. <laughs> no bro, you just like, you just, you told on yourself. That's why we're saying this. Because the internet is so good. There's all this stuff being like, hey, did you know he was on blind date? <laughs> This thing in The Guardian, I've like never paid attention to this. But he went out with this woman. He's like, well, he was a bit tense. But you know, like a martini helped him relax. They're like, what'd you talk about? Plays? Shocker. That's what he does for a living is he critiques plays. So he talked about himself and politics and Tony Blair. Great. Sounds real interesting. <laughs> Most awkward mo moment when, he, when I thought he wasn't coming. The dude was 45 minutes late. Best thing about him, um, his cultural interests. Would you, would you introduce Lloyd to your friends? Uh, some of them. I mean, she's ashamed of him. She's embarrassed by him. Any woman who is not proud to be shown with the man they're dating, they ended up dating, she's embarrassed by you because you are a fool. She doesn't want her friends judging her for, uh, or you offending them. Describe Lloyd in three words. Serious. Okay. Interesting. Open. I don't know, he doesn't seem very open to me. <laughs> What do you think Lloyd made of you? I'm not sure, but we certainly didn't stop talking. That's her way of saying he never shut up. <laughs> when he talked about her, uh, what were you hoping for? Someone who didn't mind me keeping her waiting for 45 minutes. I blame the restaurant for hiding on a roundabout. Hello, I'm a man who can't own up to my mistakes or take accountability for anything. So I'm gonna blame the restaurant for me being too dumb to find the restaurant with, uh, I don't know, a phone, that stubborn phone, right? Wouldn't let you use, shut up. A stupid phone wouldn't take me there. Even Like, how could you not find this? With Google Maps and everything, how could you not find this restaurant? So what, you know, he was hoping, like he, 45 minutes. He was 45 minutes late. That's immediate red flag. Don't go on a man who's 45 minutes late and won't apologize. Because blaming the restaurant is not an apology. First impression, a beautiful blonde with lots of patience. Red flag. That man, and who love patience, are gonna walk all over you. The only thing worse than a man who's like, I love that she's patient. What he means is like, puts up with me. Isn't when a man is like, wants someone nice. Those are code words for saying, Ruth Bush will let me walk all over her and she won't leave. <laughs> What'd you talk about? Children, divorce, Edinburgh? Her name, which means, what? Okay. Good table manner. She was instinctively solicitous about my comfort and well being. Uh oh, don't do this. Men love this because that means that you are going to center them. It's like, oh, oh, you're late, but let me comfort you because she said he's intense. He's serious. Everything went well after she got him a drink. He's probably an alcoholic too. <laughs> Best thing about her, she's a winner. Three grown up children all thriving. Oh, that means like she's a good mother. Cool. That's, that's the thing that you found to be the most intriguing that she was a good mother based on her children being successful. You think about her? her the individual. Would you introduce Karen to your friends? I only have three friends. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Men have no friends and women bear the burden. <laughs> My article is relevant in almost everything I talk about yet again. Like I said, it's not a male loneliness crisis. It's a male entitlement crisis. Marks out of 10? 11. What did she mark him? Eight. <laughs> you go out again? Possibly. <laughs> That's like no. Would he go out with her? Of course. Of course he would. He's only got three friends and he has to pay women to hook up with him and even talk to him. Describe Karen in three words. Kind. That's the only thing that matters. Y'all see that? She's patient and kind. Kind, the only thing that matters. That's code for she'll put up with my And this is why men are going to die alone.